hi Facebook world at large. Oh my God, this is an edge for me. I have not gone live on my personal Facebook profile in so long and I almost never, ever, ever sell here. Because truthfully, not gonna lie, there's still a part of me that is still fears being ridiculed or mocked or rejected uh, by you know the, the people that are from my past, from childhood, high school, my extended family members, people who don't experience life and view the world the same way that I do. I am, there's still a part of me that feels tender and like fears the rejection, or like I said, the, the mockery or the ridicule of having people think Amy's full of shit or Amy's crazy or whatever. But what I am feeling right now in the collective consciousness fields of humanity is bigger and more important than my fear. So here I am. What I am feeling is that, as I titled this live, the dark entities are stirring. In other words, if, okay, if you're a Harry Potter person, which you may or may not be, but it's like I'm feeling the presence of the Dementors, an increased presence of the Dementors. I don't physically see them with my own eyes, but I see them in influencing people, uh, acting through people. I, I see and feel in my client sessions how the dark things are winding their way around our consciousness and trying to pull us in the direction that they want to go. I feel that we are headed into a particularly challenging fall and winter period, more so than, you know, even the last couple of years, which may be hard for some of you who choose to watch this to believe because, you know, we've been through the ringer the last couple of years. But I feel that we're headed into a period of increased darkness. I am not meaning any of this to be political. I'm not talking about the news. I'm not talking about, you know, global events, whatever um, narratives, whatever side of the, <laughs> the global narrative you fall on. That's not what I'm talking about. I am talking about a collective awakening that has been happening um, and has been accelerating over the last two years. So... I, what I do, and you may not know because this is my Facebook profile. <laughs> so people on my Facebook profile, you may not know. You may just know me as Amy, who used to be your midwife or Amy, who used to be your midwife colleague or Amy, your niece, Amy, your cousin, Amy, your sister, whatever. Um, but what I do for work is I have a podcast called Third Eye Awakening and I help people navigate a spiritual and psychic awakening. And what I have noticed over the last couple of years is that more and more and more people are waking up. And the reason for this is many fold, but mainly because as we kind of watch things move in the direction that they're moving in terms of the global narratives, it's triggering people to start to question things and also just start engaging with life at a different level, moving beyond the framework of understanding self as just this one incarnation to understanding self as a soul that has had many incarnations. And I mean, that's literally just the tip of the iceberg. Holy moly, it goes a lot deeper, but I'll spare you all. But the point is that the human collective consciousness is awakening to a, an expanded perception of who we actually are, what this place is and what the fuck is going on here. And we have been under the control and the subjugation for a very, 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 very long time, well beyond this century, centuries upon centuries upon centuries, of dark forces of higher intelligence that persuade us through a number of um, methods to see life and engage with life in the way that they want us to so that it serves their ends. Basically, a really great analogy would be like, we're essentially the livestock for um, a different dark field of intelligence and they feed off of our energy. So they don't necessarily feed off of our physical bodies the way we feed off of 
you know, cows, whatever. But they, um, they find ways to keep us engaged perpetually in wars and famines and very high stress survival based situations over and over and over so that we are constantly releasing our creative, powerful energy in a reactionary state to the distressing circumstances that we are witnessing and being forced to participate in. And that powers up that level of consciousness, that dark level of consciousness. So I don't want to make this live too long because I know you're all busy, you have things to do. But I feel the Dementor is stirring. I feel the dark things stirring. As we awaken, they are not happy about it. Because when we awaken, we start to essentially question the systems that we have taken for granted for our entire lives. And we start to become aware of different choices available to us. What it comes down to is we start to accept and return to our power and our sovereignty. We stop just taking things for granted. We stop just blindly following rules and we start to become just to whatever degree we're ready for active creators of our own realities. That is not what they want us to do. <laughs> they want us to stay asleep and subdued so that they can continue to feed off of our energy in the astral field. So I feel them stirring because we are waking up. They don't want us to wake up. They are getting angry. They want to pull us back down into dark places, low vibrational frequencies of consciousness. I am seeing this everywhere. I do Akashic Record readings occasionally. Mostly I don't do that anymore because I was way too heavily booked. Um, but I do do them still and I run a lot of group programs. I have conversations with a lot of people through my podcast, Third Eye Awakening. If you're interested in spiritual and psychic awakening topics, check it out. Um, and also I've noticed on Instagram and in Facebook, a lot of people's comments, even in like to totally normal posts by normal, I mean, not in the vein of spirituality, not in the vein of, um, conspiratoriality or whatever, just, just people just fucking living their lives, just doing their thing. I am noticing a lot of comments and reflections of, of people stating that they have like recently been super triggered in traffic or really edgy with their kids, feeling a lot of anger, a lot of judgment, a lot of um, self-judgment, like very, you know, like uncomfortable emotions are coming to the surface. And people are saying like, it's out of character for them. And what I'm able to see because I am psychic um, and I'm very, very attuned to the collective consciousness field of energy. So what I am able to see, I can see the overarching pattern that this actually is not personal as much as it is more of um, the collective shadow body rising to the surface. Man, I'm like, I'm so long-winded to a fault. Once I get rambling, it's really hard to stop me. It's hard to stop myself. And I also don't want you to just believe me. I don't expect you to just believe me. Like I said, I haven't shown up here on my personal Facebook profile in like two years. So why should you be listening to me? Um, I... I started spiritually awakening around 17 or 18. It was super hard. It was super lonely. My 20s fucking sucked so much. You could not pay me millions of dollars to go back and redo my 20s over and again as it was. It was so alienating. It was so lonely. And I was undergoing a lot of psychic attacks and I had um, dark entity attachments. Now, I'm not talking about demonic attachments. Those exist. Those are real. I have seen them and I have worked with them. But I didn't have demonic attachments. I had kind of like lower trickster parasitic energy attachments and the way that it showed up was in my thought field so i would be you know just living my life trying to work as a waitress trying to finish art school take care of my kid and i would have these deep feelings of profound shame and it felt like these windy twisty thoughts that would just oh god they would just pull me down into a space where 
I didn't feel like I could talk to anyone. I felt like I was a burden to people. I felt like everyone hated me. I felt, and, and I wasn't, I also wasn't coming from a place of being super self-absorbed and thinking that everyone was thinking about me all the time, but it was just sort of this, it was like there was something coiled around my thoughts and my, and my emotions that when I started to feel good about myself, like if there was a staff party at work or somebody invited me out to coffee and like I had the opportunity to maybe make a new friend, it would crank on that that story. It would turn on those thoughts and pull me back down so that I literally felt paralyzed on my couch. I am not joking. That's not an exaggeration. I would sit on my couch and gently rock back and forth and I couldn't hardly move. I couldn't get up and wash my hair. I could barely, I was barely eating. If you remember me from my 20s, you will know I was stick thin. Uh, I could hardly function. I didn't even realize I had a dark entity attachment until probably I'm about to turn 41 and I think it was when I was 30 that I started to learn how to manifest. And as such, I started to step into my power. And as a result, I started receiving a lot of psychic attacks. Um, They mostly came in the astral plane in the form of dreams, but they also came through interpersonal relationships, kind of, you know, people saying things that really, really cut right into my, you know, my wounds and my fears. But I would have terrible dreams. Like, it, it's crazy. Like, like vivid movies, only it was everything. It was smells, it was sounds, it was um, like heat sensations. I remember one dream, I had a dream that there was a house on a hilltop and it was on fire and there was a family, mother, father, and three children inside burning alive and screaming for help while demons prevented me from getting to them to help them. It was intense. (laughs) And I'll say too, I had sought mental health counseling. Okay. It's not just that I had mental undiagnosed mental illness problems. I was on medication at the time because I had, you know, I thought I was depressed. I mean, I was, but I thought it was just a chemical imbalance. And so I was being treated um, by a psychiatrist for uh, depression and anxiety. And, and I was still having these experiences. It had, whether in the presence of medication and the absence of medication, I tried different medications, it didn't matter because it wasn't a mental illness thing. It was a psychic attack. It was dark entity attachments. And eventually, I, I still didn't at that point, I kind of started figuring out like, oh, I'm stepping into my power and they're ramping up and they're trying to pull me back down. But I didn't have anybody advising me about this. I was just figuring it out on my own. And it was extremely alienating, very difficult. So I'm just sharing all this to let you know that this isn't just shit I'm making up. I I experience it myself. I see it with other people and I don't know about how you've experienced this year so far, but 2022 up until about mid-August was actually a beautiful, blessed break for me from these dark energies. It was like, I don't know. The energy felt so like rainbow crystalline, just beautiful, bright, high vibrational. Um, It just felt really beautiful. And I kind of thought we were out of the woods. (laughs) Ha 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 ha. No, we're not. We're not out of the woods. I think, at least for me, that was a a period to, it was like a break to really, really, really anchor myself deeply in the, it's like fortifying myself to prepare for what is to come. So my purpose in this message is not to spread fear or superstition. I'm sure it sounds very fearful, but I'm not here to fear monger. I'm not here to contribute to any conversations either on the right or the left or on this side or that side of any kind of polarizing debate honestly i don't give a shit about all that like that's a distraction personally that's how i perceive it it's all distraction what the what i see as the bigger picture is that the benevolent benevolent forces of the god source creator are streaming into 
the planet into the planetary consciousness, the human collective consciousness, into the the galactic consciousness, uh, like the whole you know Milky Way galaxy and beyond. Um, there's, if you've looked at the sun lately, I mean, it's not the same sun that we grew up with. I mean, it's it's probably the same sun, but it's so bright, it's so warm, it's blindingly bright. The quality of the sunlight is like white. It's white. I remember the sun as being yellow. Things are changing is my point. That's what I'm trying to say. And as we awaken, as we start to remember and reassemble fragments of our consciousness, we start to remember ourselves beyond this one single incarnation that we are experiencing right now. And we start to expand into the remembrance of ourselves as souls on a continuum belonging to a collective over soul consciousness, we are also witnessing and experiencing the activation of the collective shadow body and the um, dark forces that have had basically like they've been having a field day for a long time and they aren't interested in just relinquishing that if you know anything about narcissistic psychopathic personality types um they're not they're just not it's not in their makeup to be like oh well i guess we had a good run let's just let you all go and ascend <laughs> that's not they will hold on to the bitter motherfucking end then <laughs> they're not interested in like rolling over and taking it. They are not interested in accepting a loss with any kind of grace. Um, they are, you know, just going to ramp up their efforts. So tomorrow and Saturday, I'm hosting a masterclass, which I've called a masterclass. I packaged it as a masterclass because I want to make it accessible to everyone. But really, it's an entire self-contained course on how to recognize and handle these dark energies. For example, they often show up in people who have um, addiction issues. If you're somebody or you know somebody who's struggled repeatedly with addictions and has tried and tried and tried to kick that habit, probably there is an entity that is keeping that person in a low vibrational state of extreme shame based on trauma, both personal experiences of trauma and inherited trauma, that causes them to continue to cycle and eddy around in these low vibrational, low consciousness behavioral patterns. The same is true for somebody who has um, anger issues borderline personality disorder, uh, basically anybody who has active trauma, which I try my best to not speak in absolutes because it's obviously flawed. So I don't like making umbrella statements about everybody, but I will say I'm pretty sure every single one of us has active trauma. Every single one of us. Trauma can be huge, like very obvious, easy to understand, a horrible car accident changes your life we know that's trauma but trauma can be losing your job and not knowing how you're going to pay your bills and the destabilization that creates in your nervous system trauma can be as subtle as growing up and being told that you're too loud or you're too much or you're being a pain in the ass or whatever so you just believe that there's something undesirable and wrong with you and you carry that forward in every moment of your life, believing that that is true. There are different levels of trauma and I'm pretty sure we all have active trauma. And so the, the, the dark entities, I mean, there's so much I wanna say. There's different hierarchies. There's the, there's the antichrist, dark energy field. There is the satanic energy field. There's the Luciferian energy field. You don't have to believe in Jesus Christ as an individual person. Um, 
I'm not Christian. I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to religiously pull anyone into anything. But the Antichrist field is a real thing. You also don't have to believe that Satan is a real individual. The Satanic field is a real thing. There are Satanists, there are Antichristists, there are Luciferianists, there are Baphometists. Some of them are human, a bunch of them are not human. There are these astral consciousness fields that interweave around our consciousness and keep us where they want us to be for their own gain, their own benefits and their own purposes. There's the collective shadow body. There are trickster entities. Um, there are like higher demonic entities, lower demonic entities, or you could say major demonic entities, minor demonic entities. <sighs> oh, sorry, I feel like I'm just vomiting all over all of you. <laughs> There's just so much information. Um, there are like parasitic thought fields, um, things that I call like thought bots, like just they're, they don't really have consciousness. They're more like viruses, like thought viruses that just float around and kind of get into your mind and your own thought fields and start influencing the way that you perceive yourself and the way that you perceive your life. I mean, at this point, I think probably most of us can agree that if we look around at the reality that we have all co-created consciously and unconsciously, this isn't all there is. This is not, this isn't it. We are very powerful. And, and when I say powerful, I mean we are fractals of a, a God source creator consciousness. And we therefore have fractal versions of that creative power. We can create a whole different reality than what we have here. But we can't do it while we are under the subjugation of these darker energy fields. So I feel them stirring. I'm hosting this masterclass. It is complete. It's a complete course, but it's packaged in it as a two-part masterclass about recognizing these fields, understanding what dark entities are, what the darkness even is, how the darkness started, recognizing the Antichrist field, the Satanic field, the Luciferian field, the Baphomet field, the demonic fields, the, the collective shadow body, the individual shadow body, being able to recognize dark entities in ourselves, if we have them, um, recognize dark entities in others, in our loved ones, um, or others that we know, and most importantly, how to handle them. I used to be so afraid of these things, so afraid. Movies like Paranormal Activity or The Conjuring, holy shit, like terrified me, terrified. I can't even put it into words. Now I can just fend that shit off with a squirt gun while sipping a chamomile tea. It's not, I've learned through so much work on myself and so much work with clients, how to understand, recognize, and navigate trauma and how to understand, recognize, and navigate dark entities. And because I feel them stirring, I feel like we're going into, like when I say we're going into kind of a dark fall and winter, yes, it will probably play out on the global scene in the ways that we've been hearing in the news media and alternative news media Again, that's not what I'm here to talk about. The way I really see it playing out is in unhealed aspects of our trauma coming to the surface and unconsciously spilling out at an increased rate onto our loved ones. So, um, or other people, they don't have to be our loved ones. It can just be other people. I, I see these, um, these wounds coming to the surface and colliding with each other. I see a lowering in the collective morale as we are <laughs> haunted, in a sense, by those shadow aspects um, that, again, are seeking to pull us down into lower realms of consciousness so that we, we feel disempowered and they harvest off of our creative life force, God source energy. Many of us incarnated here at this time to have the role of being able to navigate these times with lucidity, 
and compassion so that we can actually see what is going on. When somebody else behaves like a total crazy person, like starts yelling at you or, um, you know, like somebody cuts you off in traffic and then flips you the bird and then starts, you know, like pulls over and tries to get out of their car and start a fight, like that kind of stuff. Some of us are here to be able to see that and hold the truth of what's happening with compassion and to really recognize that that person in a sense in that moment is being possessed by a dark energy that is feeding off of their unhealed trauma, is puppeting them through their unhealed trauma. Many of us are here to, I say it's like the term I use is hold the frequency, hold the frequency of the light hold a higher level of lucidity and consciousness, see things with that clarity, and hold a tremendous amount of compassion and unconditional love and grace for ourselves and for all other beings at this time through this incredibly difficult period. We're not gonna be in this period forever, but the collective shadow body has to be seen. We are dragging around the baggage of so much trauma, generations upon generations upon generations of unhealed, unwitnessed trauma and the only way through this is to to see it to see it and be present with it and transmute it alchemize it through the presence of our heart-centered being so this master class i'm holding it tomorrow um part one is informational tomorrow at noon eastern time um i'm holding it over zoom and part two is like an Akashic Records Q&A. If you don't know what the Akashic Records are, just Google it. Um, so it's more of a, a group question and answer. Uh, I will probably tune into a couple people's energy. I can't tune into everybody's energy, um, but we'll definitely be answering questions uh, through the Akashic field. There are replays, of course. I know everybody is now available uh, at noon on a Friday. Um, and plus people are different, different time zones, whatever. So there's a replay with lifetime access. The cost is $77 um, US dollars. And if you decide to join me in this, then you also get free access to the Understanding Entities Part 1 Masterclass that I did in December, which was like over two hours long, really, 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 really good, really, really, really powerful. So these two go together. Um, they just expand on each other. If you are listening and you're interested and you're like, but I don't want to spend $77 or that feels like a lot or whatever, whatever, um, totally fine. I get it. I have... On my podcast, I have recently put out an episode. I think I called it The Darkness is Stirring or something like that. Um, it was a recent episode, the second or third to last one, where I talk more about this and you can listen there. I have a number of episodes on my podcast about this kind of thing. <clears throat> like I said, my intention is not to bring any fear um, or to contribute to any fear or superstition or religiosity or anything like that. My intention is to bring people to a place of conscious awareness of these unseen factors that influence us all the time, every day, influence us, influence our loved ones, so that we can be in our power and deal with them accordingly so that, you know, we're not just, it's not just about banishing dark things either. It is about alchemizing and transmuting the, the pieces of darkness that we have responsibility over. This is also not about being all love and light and rainbows and unicorns. It's a very, very balanced perspective. I think that's all I want to say. Let me know in the comments if you feel like it. If, if you have observed this yourself or if any of this resonates with you, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all, please. Um, I'm just here trying to offer my perspective and my gifts to help and support the evolution of human consciousness on this planet so that we can create a much more beautiful and harmonious world together for all of us to share and obviously for our children, our children's children, and our children's children's children. Okay, that's it everyone. 
I love you so much, and I hope that you have amazing, uh, <laughs> an amazing, beautiful day or night wherever you are.